Hey guys, Philosopher here, and today we're talking about how to build your astonishing X-Men team. You know, I get questions a lot of times like, how big do I need to make my astonishing X-Men to be reliable in Doom Raid? How big do I need to make my astonishing X-Men if I want to punch up in war? And I think people are looking for me to answer these things with saying like 200K, 400K, 300K. But the real answer is, you know, it depends on how you build the team. It's really important. This is a team more than most that benefits if you build it the right way. So, you know, I will tell you, for example, my Astonishing X-Men team, we can look here at the total power level of the team. It's 537K. Not only do I have absolutely no problem on, let's say, the toughest mutant node, which is the second node, uh, uh, in the in the lane uh, with this team, I always one shot it uh, reliably with losing no one. But I also punch up against 800k teams in war. You've actually seen some of the videos, right? Punching up huge on Sinister Six and that sort of thing. The reason I'm able to do that is because the team is constructed right now to get the maximum out of what it has. So let me explain to you what that is. So first of all. If you're going to build Astonishing X-Men, you really want to have a big bishop to get the most out of this team. Now, I know you're going to immediately say, well, Philosopher, you've got the seven-star bishop. Yours is six red stars. I don't have that. Well, that's true. But here's what I would say to you. You need to build bishop as big as you can. So if you've got four stars on bishop, make sure you get them up to four reds. And then get as much gear on the bishop as you can do for your level of competition. And I can't tell you what that is, but whatever it is, T should be the biggest one on the team. Why is that? Well, first of all, he is the main damage dealer for this team, and there isn't that much damage outside of him. He is it. He's the damager. He is also the tank. You get the double benefit here. Every piece of gear you put in this guy, and he scales really well with gear, gets you not only damage, but he's a protector essentially for the team. So it's a big bishop solves a lot of problems on this team. Now, uh, some people have asked me, like, look, I'm free to play. I kind of skipped out on the blitzes or I didn't do very well in the blitzes. I got a two-star bishop. You know, my answer for you is you may want to look at alternative teams. You don't need this team to do well even in the Mutant Nodes and the Doom Raid. You can use X-Factor plus, let's say, Emma Frost. Uh, I've done that and had no problem one-shotting the nodes. I do think um, Astonishing X-Men is a little bit better on the first two nodes in terms of doing it at a lower power level. But that's what with the team built the right way. And if you have a tiny bishop, it kind of limits the effectiveness of your team. Why is it so important to have a big damager on your team? Well, that's because of the Jubilee passive. So the Jubilee passive gives Astonishing X-Men allies speed bar by 25%. That is really, really important. The, you, what you want to do with this team is get on a roll where you kill people, land the killing blows, and then get lots of speed bar so you just take tons and tons of turns. So... That You do that by making your damager big and having him take lots of attacks. So the ISO setup is very important. One thing is absolutely certain. You have to have striker and bishop. So you have a big bishop taking extra attacks. And then you need to have other characters who are skirmisher who are uh, you know, marking those targets. So Iceman and Kitty in particular, I have here a skirmisher. Why? Because at level 5 skirmisher, they get 50% focus buff. They're the ones, these are, these are the least important characters in the team. These can be small. All you need out of Iceman and Kitty Pride is to hit their debuffs. And most of the time, not all, I get some resists, they hit their debuffs at level 71, G13, and level 5 Skirmisher. Why do I do G13? I know I'll get comments on that. It just gets a tiny boost. And at my level of war where I'm always punching up seven, you know, against 700 and 800k teams, it helps a little bit. But... You know, th these are these are characters I'll probably bring up even in more in levels just because I am ha tackling tough content. But nonetheless, these are the characters you want small. And I actually think the team benefits from having them smaller. Why? Well, the positioning for this team is laid out right here when you look at how I have the team set up. So I actually have Bishop in the middle. 
and I have Iceman and Kitty Pride next to him. Why? Well, these are very survivable members. Iceman actually revives once after he dies. Kitty, when she gets low health, she actually goes into stealth and she gives herself dodges and so forth. So these are survivable characters, but they aren't very good. And if you get them at lower health, they actually feed speed bar to a good character, Beast, who's really important. The three big characters are Bishop, Jubilee, and Beast. And so you want Beast to get speed bar uh, which ha- which I think it's actually it's it's also on the Jubilee passive. Really, she's the the reason that this team uh, works. So here you go. When an astonishing X Men ally drops below fifty percent health, fill Beast speed bar by thirty percent and generate ability energy for Beast. So the way this team works is essentially you have Iceman and Kitty Pride getting taking some hits along with Bishop. Bishop never really gets hurt because he's so big. Uh, they get speed bar to Beast, and then Beast can do his ultimate and give speed up to the team and offense up and defense up, and then it just goes on a massive roll, and Bishop just blows everyone away with massive damage. Now, Jubilee and Beast, though, have to be big enough to survive their hits. If Jubilee dies, you're in trouble. If Beast dies, you're in trouble. Bishop is not very good without Jubilee. He's not a solo character. He's a team character with at least these two other members. And so... You know, Jubilee needs to stay alive. She also needs to land her debuffs. Not much of a damager, but she's got to land her stuns. She's got to land her slows and so forth. And so that's why I have her at level uh, uh, 80, gear tier 14. I've never had a problem with her surviving. I never had a problem with her landing debuffs. Same thing with Beast, level 80, G14. No problem with him staying alive, which is his function here. Now, the ISO setup for Beast could be different. You could have him as Skirmisher. In fact... If you have a big enough beast, it's better to have him as Skirmisher because you don't need the additional healing. It really just depends. I mean, candidly, I've never had a problem doing anything uh, with Axemen, with this Axemen of this size. Like, I I clear my lane in 4.3. We do 100% 4.3 on Gamma. Uh, I have no problem, uh, or in Beta or Alpha, no problems if I'm, let's say, running on a Mutant node. I have no problem in the Doom Raids. I don't have a problem at Diamond level War. But you obviously, this is all dependent on your level. Now, T4s, this is a team that has tons of T4s that are good. And the question is just how much do you want to invest? I purposely only put T4s in these three characters. And I only put uh, T4s in that helped outside of Raid. Why? Well, for a long time, I just ran these three with the dad bros because these two aren't very good anyway. Uh, But they actually do help. I find that the the full team works better together. Um, just because the, the, they get, they feed uh, speed bar to beast and so forth, but I didn't bother with these. I didn't put anything raid wise. Cause frankly, I figured, you know, I'm not really relying on them in raid. I had other choices in raid, but I just haven't bothered going back and putting more T4s in. And the, the four that I did are Bishop ultimate and passive. And then I did Jubilee passive And I did Beast Special. And you really want Beast Special because in many matchups, particularly in war, but even if you're in raid, the the difference between a wipe and uh, a success or the difference between winning and losing in war is often, you know, do you get those blinds off of your team? Uh, Do you get that that stun off of uh, Jubilee or Bishop? So that could be really key. So making sure here that you get the... Uh, clearing two negative effects instead of one to two, I think is very helpful. Um, and then Jubilee's passive is b- an absolute necessity. It's the most important one on the team. This gives that additional speed bar for beasts and health and damage to the whole team. And then, you know, Bishop has two really important T4s. I think getting more damage reduction and getting 100% chance to counterattack is important. This ultimate is important too. Now, If you're using this team more than I am or you're using it at a lower power level, there's others to consider. And Kitty Pride's uh, passive for raids is really nice. You know, gaining self for two turns uh, as opposed to one when she drops below health is kind of nice. Although, you know, whatever. But this is the key part. Always applying Evade to the most injured, astonishing X-Men ally. That's super nice as opposed to 50%. I really haven't needed it. Um... Uh, but it's nice. 
Um, and then look, you know, the I, even the Iceman passive is okay. If I was going to do one on Iceman, it's not bad. But, you know, reducing armor and damage by enemies with slow since so many of the enemies have slow. Um, you know, but I, I mean, I, I don't know how necessary that is. I think if I, you know, if you're just thinking about, you know, potentially breaking up this team far in the future, you know, it might be safer to actually invest in these. You know, the, the nice thing about this one uh, is it actually has a piece of this that's not stated, which is that it reduces the speed bar by an additional 10% if you put the T4. The devs are aware of this error or this this failure to list that, but they have not fixed it yet. Otherwise, this just gives you some damage, which is just okay. But getting a little speed bar reduced is nice. It's kind of like the Proxima Alt, getting that a little extra turn. Uh, 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 rewind there and then this is nice because if you're using the full team you get an assist from all the allies instead of two random and it makes it more likely and offense up to to all astonishing x-men allies which is nice because it means that you'll definitely get offense up on bishop and it means you get an assist from all of the allies as opposed to just two uh, I, 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 uh, you know, I, uh, you know, uh, skip that essentially because I was not even running the full team at first. But this is, you know, I think even more important than the ultimate, most likely, because the ultimate's already doing its job by stunning that enemy. The basic is also nice for war, just because it gives you an additional 20% chance to apply blind. In raids, it's worthless because you always apply blind. It just gives you a little extra damage. But I think it's very nice because she's also somebody I said a striker because I think her blinds are really important. In the Doom Raid, for example, blinding the enemy bishops is very important to make sure you get that uh, basically 100% dam damage reduction. Um, now, some of you might wonder, well, why, uh, Philosopher, you have all this gear, you're the, some end game player, why don't you just bring everyone to G15? The, the short answer is, I don't really need to, this team does everything that I wanted to do now at this level, and I mean everything, like, I'm, there, I'm at the, I'm fighting the biggest alliances in the game, and I'm completing every raid, um, but there's nothing wrong with having G15 on Jubilee, or on Beast, or whatever, you know, one thing to keep in mind, of course, is I have a level 5 ISO on all of them, and I have 7 yellow stars and 5 red stars. And, and I even use a gold promo to bring Bishop up uh, to 6. So that is doing some of the work for me. If you have like a 5-star a Jubilee, it may be more valuable to you to have her at gear tier 15 just to get a tiny amount of additional focus to make sure you land your debuffs. But... You know, just to be crystal clear, going from, you know, gear tier 14 level 80 up to gear tier 15 isn't this insane increase. You, you get a better value if you're trying to save more gear. If you're tight on gear, if you're free to play or a dolphin or something and you're a little tight on gear, going gear tier 14 level 80 is enough. Obviously, she's very good in the, the uh, legendary uh, portion of DD4. She's an option there, but she's not necessary, and there are plenty of characters who can help you get through that section. It's really a matter of how to gear this team. The important thing, though, is to make sure you have your team with Bishop as the big one and with these other two, survivable. The, if you have, a let's say, your 500K team with a huge Iceman or a big Kitty or you just bring all of them to the same gear level and the same star level, you know, that can be a problem uh, because ultimately Kitty and Iceman are not going to do the work that a big bishop would. All right, guys, if you like this video, uh, smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, uh, check out uh, our Discord. We have lots of great discussions about this. Uh, the link is below. And also we have a link to our stream. I uh, stream every uh, weeknight usually on Twitch uh, in U.S. evenings. And we have lots of great discussions there.